Hi, today we're going to fix yet another dead MacBook. Here we have an A1706 MacBook Pro touch bar that's not turning on. This is one of those machines that has USB-C ports on the side of the machine. It's known for things like it's soldered on SSD, sending 52 volts to the CPU because the CPU data line is right next to the backlight power line, and the keyboard dying for no reason, as well as being one of the only laptops made in modern times that was recalled because opening and closing the machine will kill it. One of Apple's best works. Let's open it up and see what's wrong with it. Okay, let's see how many amps this thing is taking. It's taking 20 milliamps at 20 volts. So, the CD3215 is do appear to be communicating, but it's not turning on. Now, the next thing that I would do at this point is check one of the primary voltages, which would just so happen to be our PP bus. Now, remember, the, that thing is not going to show you the amperage taken because the power supply is not actually being used here, in it, so I'm just going to close that program since having it open is pointless. The, I don't have the power supply attached to the USB-C cable because that, that takes that, that's too confusing for me, so I use this little USB-C amp meter with an Apple charger. One of the few Apple products I own. It makes me sick to my stomach. Now it looks like our PP bus is 12 volts. And it also looks like somebody has arrived that may have my food. Is that a man with my food? It looks like our PP bus is indeed short circuited to ground. So what do I mean when I say PP bus? Well, if we open up a schematic for the 820-00239 board for the A1706 MacBook Pro, you'll see that there's a bunch of power rails. PP bus is the voltage that comes from the battery. It's also the voltage that goes to the battery. Now, if we take a look at just the PDF, you'll see that there's a page on the schematic that has the list of power rails. Now, since I had my, since while I turned the, when I, when I plugged the charger in, it was giving me 20 volts, I know that the main rail that I need for this to work, PP3V3 underscore G3Hot, is go on. Because if that rail was not on, the CD3215 would not be able to negotiate with the charger to tell the charger to put out 20 volts rather than 5 volts. And I talk about that in my pre prior videos, where I talk about the importance of PP3V3 underscore G3Hot. That's, that's set. So the next rail after that is going to be our PP bus. And our PP bus is 0 0.4 volts. It's also about 9 to 10 ohm short to ground. Now, this may be similar to one of the videos that Hi Hi probably has in his editing queue right now. Most likely on this board, what winds up happening is one of those little tantalum capacitors decides to shit itself and explode. And we're going to see if the same thing has happened here. You don't really even need a thermal camera to find these shorts because they wind up being so damn obvious. Pilot, pilot, pilot. Where are we flying? All right, let's see if we can find the cause of the short circuit on this MacBook over here. What's the difference between RMA223 and NC559? NC559 is what cool people use, and RMA223 is what the squares use. Are you a square? What about that 509 stuff that Tim has? Square. Be a bro.
See, this is something that's really interesting about these machines. Now, the A1706 in particular is a lot of the dead boards on these are not really water at this point. They're just, like, just sodomized capacitors. And look at this. What is that? Well, this, this is happening regularly on my streams now. So this is a cap, a PV bus S5 CPU. Yeah, this is a polymer tantalum. Let's see what's going on with this. <coughs> Look at this thing. 33 microfarad, 16 volt tantalum polymer. So this cap is made for 16 volts. PP bus on this machine is 12 volts. And like, there's no water damage here. I mean, you may th tell me that this stuff here is water, but it's not. This is just this capacitor exploding. I mean, look at this. This is a machine that looks like it's been treated pretty well. On the outside, it looks nice. On the inside, it looks nice. You know, there's no corrosion, no liquid, no bugs. What is this stuff? How does this... I mean, I'm not going to continue looking through the board because that would be a total waste of time. How often does this happen to your ThinkPad, hi hi? How, have, how often do you just open up your ThinkPad and it, it looks like this? Hey, okay, I did this to your USB port. But I sent 58 volts to hi hi's USB port, but we don't talk about that. On the desk, I'm sitting in the worst possible spot because that little noise that the iron makes the beep, the speaker's pointing right at my ear. That, uh, are you, yeah, this thing looks like it was welded onto the board. Jesus. Alright. Well, you can get this thing off without using too much hot air there, can't we? Alright. Yeah. Get a little bit of flux, a little bit of wick. This is an A1706 13.3 inch MacBook Pro touch bar from 2016. With an 820-00239 board. With the SSD soldered onto the board. Now, I don't move the Q-tip, like, I'm not going to shove it back and forth, I like to roll it so that the fibers, if the fibers happen to come off, I want the fibers to wind up wrapping themselves around the Q-tip rather than going into the board. That's my strategy here. Dry that off. You notice the heat of the iron makes it's gonna make it melt. Now this is a really dangerous place to use hot air. It's right next to the screen cable and everything.
And Blur has a cleaning lady that comes once a week. You know, I used to have a cleaning lady that came regularly. I haven't even had time to schedule, but I do need to do that because my place is starting to look a little shitholy from all the time at work. I'm working with uh, someone on getting my training manual in order. They can go back to the good old work-life balance thing. We have, you know, the person who used to do the customer service has been fairly reluctant to put into writing what there is to do. See if this thing turns on in a moment. Just gonna have it rapid cool. If we t plug in the USB-C amp meter, we're getting 900 milliamps, which means that it is indeed booting. It's working. And if we check our PP bus, one of the most important things you should check every single day when you wake up, you'll see that our PP bus voltage is a happy 13 volts. So what was wrong with this MacBook? Well. This MacBook decided to spontaneously combust. Perhaps it was sick and tired of being a MacBook and did the honorable thing. But we did drag it kicking and screaming back to life. Now it works, and that's the issue. This is something that I see happening more and more with these A1706s. No liquid damage, no drop, no scratching, no scuffs, just pshh. And it's really interesting how the caps in that specific circuit, it's, it's always the same ones. It's always one of the ones that's either over here or over here. It's always the same two. And it's interesting that it's always the same area. And I'm kind of curious to figure out why. Uh, especially when it's, you know, just no, no liquid, no nothing, just poof. I got a lot of renovations that I have to do around this place. Mic transmitter doesn't work anymore. Had to get myself a new air conditioner. Have to make the wall over here look a little bit nicer. Change up the customer area a little bit. Get a table for the Zalmo. Redo the basement. Maybe eventually rent a larger space once they're available. All these things require money. But as long as Apple is in business, as long as they design stuff like this, I've got nothing to worry about. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.